Okay. All right. Well, again, thank you all for coming. We're working our way through our technical difficulties. Reminds me of my days here at Rincon High School. <laughs> All right, uh, well, uh, why don't we go ahead and get started right here uh, with Jason Williams. Uh, why don't you take three minutes to introduce yourself? Uh, okay, I'm testing the mic. Should I try that again? All right. Can everyone hear me if I just talk like this? Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Good thing we have the teacher voice here. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters of Greater Tucson, as well as all the other sponsors for this evening's event, uh, the, our moderator, my colleagues, everyone here this evening that's attending, thank you. As a first-generation college graduate and a lifelong educator, I've been able to consistently demonstrate a proven track record of success in moving students forward academically. As a sixth grade math and science teacher, I was nominated for California Middle School Teacher of the Year. I was elected to the Teachers Association State Council. As the Executive Director of Teach for America in Phoenix, I was able to move Arizona from the lowest, they really want to emphasize that point, the lowest to the highest region in America in student achievement. As the 2006 Democratic nominee for Superintendent of Public Instruction, I was very proud to receive the most votes of any non-incumbent Democrat in what was the closest of all the statewide races that year. Since then, I've helped start the College Depot. I founded AZ Schoolworks to get more educators elected to school boards, and I continue to work with the Roosevelt School District on its turnaround efforts, as well as a faculty member for the ASU Beat the Odds Institute Parent Liaison Academy. You know, I'm running again for state superintendent because the status quo and special interest insiders have continued to fail to provide excellent public schools for all our children. I know without a doubt from my life, work, and experience that not a single one of our children has to fail, so the question remains, will we fail them? And when I think of Arizona, I don't think of it as a below average place, but when it comes to educating our kids, the sad reality is that we are. Right now in Arizona today, we have seven out of 10 of every kids that are not reading at grade level by the fourth grade. We have one out of every three students that are dropping out of high school. Thanks to the last round of cuts by the state legislature, we've dropped to dead last in per pupil funding for our public schools. It's time that we finally come together and put an end to that type of failed leadership and misplaced values for our children, which is why I look forward to tonight's discussion and hopefully working together with all of you so that we can make sure that we provide every single student in Arizona with the excellent education that they deserve. So again, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the discussion and the questions this evening. Thanks. to making a difference for the kids in our schools. 
I am by trade a special education teacher. I hold six active certificates in the state of Arizona, four teaching certificates and two administrative certificates, and I'm very, very proud of the work that I've done with our teachers, with our students, and with our um, new professionals that are coming into the teaching profession. Public education in Arizona is clearly at a crossroads. Um, we are at a place in this state, as you heard earlier, where the statistics are quite frankly fairly dismal. But I prefer to look forward, to think about what it is we can do for our children and for our schools. And to me, the number one most important thing in public education in Arizona is that we return once again to the promise of what our public schools can do for our children rather than what they are not doing for them. That we really think about um, the funding structure for our schools, the accountability system for our schools, the engagement of our parents in our communities and in the education of their children, and that we build relationships together to move forward so that Arizona has the best public schools in the nation. I look forward to your questions. I am so happy to be here, and thank you very, very much for your time. candidates, but they, they've asked me to say, let, let's not have applause simply, and, and I'm not trying to be mean to the Republicans here, but <laughs> <laughs> simply because uh, there's so much to get through this evening, uh, we want to keep things moving along. So, uh, John Hoopenthal. My name is John Hoopenthal, I'm chairman of the Senate Education Committee, and I am a Tucsonan. I grew up in Tucson, um, on, the, on the south side, out, off of Valencia, Sunnyside School District, and I went to St. John's Catholic School and South Point High School. Now, I came from a very frugal household. My father came, got his values in the Great Depression. His father died at the age when he was 10, and he had to put the food on the table for a very large family. He's here with me tonight, and I'm intensely proud of the values that he passed on to me. And it's basically, if you don't eat it, don't wear it, or don't work with it, you don't buy it. And those are the values that I brought to the state legislature. And with my values and my background, for somebody to come to me and say, geez, we just can't get the mission accomplished for $10 billion, you're talking to the wrong person. I know that we can be creative and get a lot more accomplished. When I got the chairmanship of education, I wanted to do something on performance pay, but I didn't want to repeat the hundreds of mistakes in the past. I had the state librarian pull every research paper ever done on performance pay, all the quality ones, over 700. And we ground through those over three months and we didn't find a single working model. And every single one had crashed and burned over hundreds of years. So we sat down and we said, let's see if we can learn something in the private sector. You can't run education like a business, but maybe there's some scientific principles that you can transfer over. So we found in companies like Intel, Procter & Gamble, Motorola, um, IBM, that all the employees got a bonus for how the whole company was doing. Well, guess what? Nobody had ever done that in education, given teachers a bonus for how their school district was doing. So we think, maybe we ought to try that. Bring them together as a team, share ideas between teachers and between schools, and produce a better outcomes for students. Then we found something else. We found that a lot of the best companies were measuring customer satisfaction and rewarding for that. Not just re rewarding for productivity, but rewarding for engaging their customers and uh, monitoring that relationship. We thought, hmm, if we engage parents in the process of educating their children, we give a positive incentive to teachers to reach out to parents, Maybe that would work in education. We brought that in. So we started up a performance pay experiment at Sedona High School, took their high school from six and eight percent of the students and parents rating it excellent. Now they are over 60 percent over a decade. Third highest academic gains in the nation, uh, or excuse me, in the state of any school district. And that essentially establishes a model, accountability at the school district level, at the school level, and at the individual level in a way that's positive and motivates everybody to come together as a team and improve outcomes for students. That level of research is what I bring into every endeavor I do. I don't repeat mistakes, I don't mimic fads, I go to fundamental research, best practices, the best states, the best school districts, the best schools, the best teachers, and that's the only thing I do. No popular opinion poll stuff for me. And I have consistently produced reforms that improve, when those are applied, improve outcomes for students and parents. Thank you. Uh, 
good evening. I would also would like to thank the Lady of uh, Women Voters uh, for hosting the, the candidates forum tonight. Uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about who I am and why I think I'm the best candidate for the superintendent of public construction. I'm a native Arizona and I was born in Rome, Arizona and raised in Bisbee, Arizona. I am um, one of ten children. My father was a copper miner down in Bisbee. Uh, I, as I said, I'm one of ten children. Uh, we were all products of the Bisbee Unified School District, the public school. In fact, over 30 years of schooling, uh, all, all of my brothers and sisters went through. And so I am very proud of being a product of the public schools, and that's one of the reasons I'm running for this position. I've sat in every single chair in education, starting out with teacher, teacher mentor, assistant principal, principal district administrator, and currently I'm the deputy superintendent at the Arizona Department of Education. I am truly wanting to make sure that public education is a viable system in Arizona for all students because I believe all students deserve a quality education. <laughs> I have championed measures for quality education since I started my career. As a teacher, I was very concerned with some of our students that did not have the opportunity to access curriculum because they did not speak English. And that's why when I was a principal in 1999, I was the co-chair and co-author of English for the Children that rid our schools of bilingual education and made sure that our school's primary language for instruction was English. I truly believe that all of our students need to have access to all of the curriculum, as I did when I was a student in the Bisbee Unified School District. I promise you that I will make sure that all students, regardless of the socioeconomics or from what families they come from, will be offered a quality education. I have spent all of my 30 years in education in low socioeconomic schools because I want to make sure that those students do not lose ground and that they are offered a high quality education. And that is my promise to you. My constituency have always been children and parents. I do not want to be beholden to lobbyists or interest groups. Only those children and parents should be responsive to the Department of Education. Thank you.